stars. I do too. Jennifer Tilly's coming in. She's hot. She's very hot. I'd let her play me in my next movie. I think I'm going to produce <laughs> that. Uh, it's disturbing that she's going out with Phil Locke, who I'm good friends with. And he hit the big time. Yeah, there's something very off in the universe. And she like really into him too. Yeah, unacceptable. <laughs> Jennifer, you burst to, into poker prominence by winning the World Series of Poker Ladies event. How'd you do that? Oh, well, I have no idea. And <laughs> this is the weird thing is that I kind of regret a little bit that I became a very famous poker player before I actually knew how to play poker. Because then all of a sudden I'm on Poker Superstars and Poker After Dark. I'm on all these shows playing poker and people can see that I really am no Chris Ferguson. So, uh, well, very was... few people are. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a little bit, you know, like that 11-year-old kid that won the Oscar. It's like, okay, you were good, but you're 11, okay? That's not <laughs> acting. You're some kind of, something happened and you were great. And that's what I kind of felt like in the beginning. Like for the first year, I had a real strong sense of imposter syndrome. And then you met Phil. Well, I met Phil before I won the bracelet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. 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 The, but actually, the very first time I was on TV playing poker, I didn't know how to play poker at all. There's a show called... Um, well, it was a WPT, I think it was called the Hollywood Home Game, and it was the WPT's oh, yeah. answer to the Bravo Celebrity Poker. And I actually thought I was going on the Bravo Celebrity Poker, like everybody wanted to go on that show. And I showed up and I was like, this isn't Bravo Celebrity Poker, and they're like, no, we're the WPT. And I was, I, that was the first time I'd actually ever played No Limit Texas Hold'em, not on a computer. Like, I play poker with my friends at home, and I didn't know anything what I was doing in, um... Let's see, Daniel Negreanu and Jennifer Harmon were the poker advisors. And I said to Daniel, how, how much do I bet? And he goes, he said, oh, three times the big pot, uh, three times the big blind. So that's what I was betting, three times the big blind. And I didn't know what I was doing, so I would think like hands like queen seven were good because, you know, paint, I see paint. And so I was just throwing in the chips, and I actually did really well. I ended up um, second. Because I was so aggressive, I scared everyone out of the box. Oh, that's a good style. If Cause, yeah, because I wasn't like I didn't know what I was doing. I just kept betting three times a big blind, three times a big blind. And I was a, like, wow, she's, once, got, she's a lucky girl. Once you know uh -huh. what you're doing, though, it's like uh, the Garden of Eden. You've, you've eaten from the apple, and now nothing's the same. Yeah, and well, I, the, the more you know, the more you know, the more you realize how little you actually knew in the beginning and how little you actually know. Like, your knowledge is just a drop in the ocean. And so that's when I, I met Phil off of the WPT home game. I got invited to celebrity invitation on he was teaching people how to play poker and I sat down because a friend of mine was there and he was trying to teach me he's like oh there is Jennifer Tilly and I'm gonna teach you how to play poker and she'll be really grateful and I was just like <laughs> why are you talking to me and I felt really superior like I'm not like these other celebrities that don't know how to play poker I've been playing poker for years like I thought it was really <laughs> good and so um, but then then I started dating him and I he's kind That's of weird yeah, it was really weird. Actually, the first time I dated him. You know, dating Phil? Or? I didn't think Phil like even had... like. Uh, I didn't. Well, he doesn't really have a lot of dating savvy. Yeah. And the first time I dated him, I was like, That's oh, my God. He's like the absent-minded professor. Like, he was he's the worst driver ever. He was going through, you know, stop signs. Like, he didn't even see him. Not even slowing down. Not even rolling stop. But he explained to me later on. He could see ahead of time. There was no one at the stop sign. So there's no reason to slow his momentum. But I'm freaking out. And he would drive through red lights. And he'd be talking... And, once we're driving through a red light, I go, tell us red light. He goes, oh, yes, it is. And he goes like this. This is his solution. Honk. <laughs> In case you haven't noticed, we're coming through a red light. So I got home, and I was like, never again. Like, I could, I asked him, I thought it was a simple question. I said, hey, how do you block? When's a good time to block? And he started diagrams and writing on napkins. And I was in math and MC equals seven and all this. And I was like, wow, I was just trying to make conversation. Really, I do not care. Right. And so <laughs> I got home and I was like, I'm never going out with that guy again. Never, 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 never. But then I started telling my friends. And they'd all seen him on the Celebrity Invitation where he acted like the Looney Tunes. And I started telling them stories, and they were laughing and laughing. I was telling them more stories, and they were laughing and laughing. And they go, you have to go out with him again because... We want, want to hear more stories. stories. And I kind of enjoyed being the life of the party, so I thought, okay, I'll go out with him one more time, so I'll have more Phil Locke stories to entertain my friends, and then that's it. And then on the second day, then he kind of stole my heart. On the second date, you know. That was I fast. Didn't, I we, didn't, we didn't sleep together on the second date. But oh, that, I wasn't going to ask yes. about that. But that's when I started <laughs> to think that his eccentricities were cute rather than annoying. It takes that long to, like, kind of um, warm up to it him. It was my second date with Phil where I also realized that his eccentricities were cute and not... Well, I, I've known Phil for years, and uh -huh. I didn't even know there was an emotional or, you know, I don't like to use this word right. in relation to Phil, but sexual Phil. I just knew that there was an edge calculating... <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I just thought that it didn't even have a human brain. He right. just had a calculator right. that, that determines edge. Yeah. So in the driving, uh -huh. I know Phil really well. He's just that's a gas maximization strategy because if you don't stop, you can save gas. Right. Absolutely. Efficient. Absolutely. Yeah. He, he's always into efficiencies and edge. Yeah. You find that in personal relationships as well. Uh. Well. Hmm. Well. Yes. Actually, once um he first of all uh, it, you know like lots of times I date like a lot of actors and you know a lot of Dutch going Dutch and sort of like. Okay. You went Dutch with other actors? Oh, actors. Actors are the worst. Uh, and really? I, always, I always date people who are working on their novel that they never yeah, finished. Yeah. Like, I'm attracted to artistic type. So I was like, oh, great, another poker player. And, you know, I always thought poker players were really poor. Like, I didn't know that you could win millions of dollars playing poker. Oh, I mean, okay. they're always like, don't get involved yeah, in the game. They were like scumbags. So, well, yes. Yeah, a, a little bit. I didn't really know. And when we went, went on our second date, I was like, oh, we're going to dinner. I'm probably going to have to pay for it. And we get out in the parking lot. His car cost, like, about $37. He had, like, this old... 70s sort of long thing. No, but that was a vintage like a boat. Car. Yeah, it's like a boat on wheels, but it's crazy long. And he gets out, and there's the Valley Burger, and he peels out this huge wad of hundred dollar bills with a rubber band around it. I was like, oh my god, am I on Goodfellas? You know? And he peels <laughs> off like, and it's like flipping through the hundred dollar bills looking for a small bill. And I realized that my concept of poker players and what poker players are really like these days is uh, was totally inaccurate. That's sort of weird because that's like if you went out with a carpenter and they brought their toolbox. Like, I mean, I wouldn't right. bring my. That is that is, Phil, that is Phil's tools. You yeah. know, it's like when when he's getting ready to go to the casino, he's putting the bricks of money in his backpack. You know, it's like yeah, it's like he's taking his toolbox to work. Uh, do you find yourself? I know that Phil would be emotionally. Well, he wouldn't be feeling good if he's right. having a losing streak. Do you feel the same way? If you're losing, does it affect you? know, it? it's really, really bad because when we play in tournaments, like now we try to play on the same day because what happens if we play on a separate day, I bounce out and I'm depressed, depressed for like a day and a half, two days, and then Phil will bounce out and then he's depressed. So now we try to compress the depression. So we'll both, and usually we, we I don't know how we work it, but we usually bounce out within an hour of each other. It's some sort of I know, weird I symbiotic that you guys thing. always, right. Like, it, does it one person give up after the other person's knocked out? I don't know if it's psychological, but sometimes you don't even know. Like Bay 101, I was the first person out. I think I was out in like 10 minutes. And um, I was just heading across the casino to tell Phil that I was out. And all his money was in the middle. And he was all in and he was all out too. Like right as I got there, he was out too. I was like, oh, okay, great, you know. He's trying to save gas again because then he doesn't have to come back. And then you guys could fly on the same flight. Yeah. There, there you go. But he didn't even know I was out. They didn't make an announcement or anything. Oh, it was wow. just, it's, it's like just like a psychic thing. You guys are like, that's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, I feel guilty sometimes because I feel like my bad luck emanations cause him to go out also. You know, it's like little tendrils that reach out and touch everybody He's that I care about. He's manipulating me to feel that way. Wow, well, no, he doesn't really. But I, I, I do feel bad because you know what? My anguish when I go out of tournament is is real and important, and his anguish is just annoying. <laughs> Get over it. You're a poker player. Wait, have you played with Jennifer in ladies' events or other events? We've never played together, have we? No, no. no. Have we? We we played in the same tournaments, but not at the same table. No, we haven't. But it's like weird because we always are around each other, but we never. Do you have that with Chip? Like um, when you guys are playing in a tournament, we yeah. never get to play really together anymore because uh -huh. they started doing the rules thing. Oh, right. But we have played final tables together, so that must be so strange. It is strange. I was wondering like, what we're it's... kind of scrutinized yeah. more because, right. like, it's like, oh, they're cheating or what that are they doing? That happened to Phil or... and I at at a charity event. Is that he went all in, and I know that he, I know, I know that he likes to bluff. I know, him. you know, he's like all in. And I had, I don't know, some great hand or better than his, like, you know, better than his seven high. And so <laughs> I called and I got all his chips, and then people were like. Oh, he gave them to her. Collusion. You it's like, win. yeah, I really want that yeah. plasma right. widescreen TV. <laughs> right, whatever, you know. You can't win in that situation if you're uh -huh. playing with Phil because no matter what you do, if you fold, it looks like you're soft playing him. And right. if you call, it looks like he's dumping his chips to you. Right. Yeah, no, that, that's a tough situation. But people don't understand. When you're dating somebody uh, that's in the same profession as you or a poker player, you're more competitive with oh, him yeah, than anybody else. Right. I want to knock right. Phil out of a tournament more than anybody else. In fact, my friends, before I became a pro... 
my friends were saying, Jennifer, this is so unhealthy. They're like, they're, they say, you're not a poker player. Why are you so competitive? Let Phil be the poker player. Why don't you be the no. actress? I was like, and I had to examine that because, you know, when I dated other actors, it was always like, I wanted to show them that my movie was going to make more money than their movie this weekend. And so I guess I am competitive. It's really unattractive, unfeminine <laughs> trait. I don't know if Phil told you this, but Martin Scorsese is talking to him about a starring role in... Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you know, it's a, it, Phil's um, celebrity television career is way taking off. I know. Uh, so much pop, better than yeah. mine. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's starting in, like... Not starred in. Uh, I, I think he's starting when he does cameo. But he's been in, like, several movies. And he has a television yeah. show, uh, I Bet You, With that's Antonio. really, really I successful. I like that a lot. But I always yeah. want Phil to win. Not right. that I don't like Antonio. I just like Phil more. Well, I yeah. I want Phil to win, too. And the thing is, Phil feels so much pain when he doesn't win that you can you can relate to him, you know? Uh, Jennifer, I yes. know that you're super busy, so I promise that we keep this brief, but... Oh, can I say... Can yeah, I please. Say, can I, you... Okay, because nobody ever toots my horn. Um, I just want <laughs> oh, to say... I'd like to... Okay. I had a really good World Series of Poker, and I cashed um, three times, and I made two final tables at the Bellagio Cup this year. Wow! So I'm getting very... so I'm getting better because I just so the whole time just, talking about how bad I am. She's not so, just a no, one no. hit one. I'm not just a poker player with boobs. I actually know what I'm doing. <laughs> you have a bracelet now. for God's sake. Yes, and I have a bracelet. Jennifer, thank you. Very thank much. you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.